Hi, it's Gary, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the shapes feature in the Remarkable tablet for task mapping. So it's a practical way that you can use the shapes feature. So I'll talk you through what task mapping is and show you how to use the shapes. So for task mapping, what you need to do is use a daily page or even a blank notebook page with the date written at the top. For this, this is my planner here. This is the Habit Punk planner, but you can use any planner with daily pages and you just want to find a section of the daily page to write out your tasks. Now, if you want to go through this step by step, I'll show you how it works. You need to choose a day to work on. So you work on today's date. So let's say it's January, January, right date, January the 1st. And you want to put some tasks in here. So here's some that I've prepared earlier, some example tasks that you want to do. Now, if you need to go through this step by step, I've written them out here, so you just want to pause this here, you can see um, what to do and, and the order in what to do it. So find your tasks for the day. Now you can use this, you can just brainstorm and think of anything that you need to do, or if you've got a separate goals and projects section or a piece of paper with you know your monthly tasks or weekly tasks, you can find them there. For example, I've got work on project one, so for that task I'd go into the projects, I've got more tasks in there and I can work on that. So the first thing to do is to write out your tasks in, in any order, doesn't matter, and just get them out on paper. The next step is to prioritise the tasks, and this is where the shapes feature really comes into its own on the Remarkable. So for any priority tasks, we're going to put a square around them, and for any non-priority tasks, we're going to put a, an oval around them. So let's say write emails and work on project one is our priority tasks. So to use the shapes feature, just draw a rough shape around the task or on your paper here and then just hold at the end and then it turns it into into the square or rectangle so write emails is the other one draw a rough shape around that and then hold it at the top and again it turns it into the shape if you hold still holding it you can make it bigger and smaller you can move it around until you're happy with it so let's make that smaller better there we go. And um, for the next ones that aren't priority, for the task plan, um, the task map planning, you want to just draw an oval around them or a circle. So that's that one, circle. Um, and then sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So there we go, oval, oval. Oval, oval, and this will be more of a circle. Okay, so there's the tasks in the day. Now, again, we're going back to how it works. So we've drawn our shapes around them, prioritise them, and then we're going to connect the tasks in the order that we want to do them. So we're going to start off with having a look. So the first thing we want to do on this example is go for a run. So that's the first task. After that, we're going to work on project one. So we draw an arrow to the next task. After working on, and don't worry about the timings, we're going to work out the timings on the next step. So after working on project one, we're going to um, sort some clothes. It's January, we're having a declutter, so we're going to sort some clothes out for the charity shop. Um, after that, we're going to work on writing some emails, which was our other priority. Yeah. Um, after writing emails, we want to um, then probably by the end of the day now. So do we make tea? No, let's, yeah, make tea. Yeah. And then after making tea, we want to work on our budget over here. And then after working on our budget, we're going to read a chapter of the book. And then we're going to watch Traitors, which I've just discovered on BBC. It's brilliant. I really recommend it. OK. So that's the next step. So you've got your, task map, your tasks all mapped out in the order that you want to do them. And you can see which are priorities. Uh, the next step then is to work out when you're going to do them. So again, this only takes a few minutes when you get the hang of it. And the idea is that when you've got it into the hang of doing this each day, 
then you want to prepare for the next day by doing this for the following day so you know what you've got to do as soon as you get up. Um, if you want to plan further, um, you can use, if you've got like a weekly time block, so it's handy to see at a glance, you know, what, what days you might be working. If you've got like, um, you know, you're going to visit someone on a Sunday, um, you might have a night out planned. Um, you need to walk the dog, take the kids to school. So put all that in, the regular things that you have in, in your weekly time block. And then you know what space you've got to do your tasks each day. Um, okay. So again, we go back to the daily page. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is go for a run. We're going to get up early. We're going to go for a run between um, 7. I'm going to finish the run at 8am. So just right above and below the task, the time, the start time, finish time. When you get to an arrow, you want to give yourself a little bit of a break. So we're going to give ourselves 15 minutes before we start working on project one. So we're going to work on project one for from 8.15. I'm going to work on that pretty much most of the day till 2 p.m. What you can also do is if you've got a schedule on your daily task, uh, daily page, you can write out your schedule to see the times. So seven to eight, we're going to go for a run. Just draw a line down the left hand side there. You can write, write the task in. Uh, work on projects from 8.15 till 2 p.m. So that's going to be a big chunk of the day there. Projects, and then by doing this, you can see your tasks here, and you can see your time spread out here. And um, then after that, it was to sort the clothes out for charity. So we're just going to spend a bit of time on that, I think. So we've got to start that at two thirty. We're going to give ourselves a break after working on this for a big chunk. We're going to work on that till three p.m. So two thirty till three. We're going to work on the clothes. And then after that, it was the right emails. So we'll do that for an hour. So that's from, um, so three, we're again giving ourselves a break. So 3.15 to 4 p.m. Right emails. And then um, after that, we're gonna have a break and then we're gonna make tea about five o'clock. 5 p.m. tea. So that's from five till 6 p.m. We're going to have a break, have our tea, and then after that we're going to work on the budget. So we're going to work on that from 6.30 to 7.30. Again, this is just a rough idea to give you an idea how it works, 6.30 to 7.30. Um, then after that we're pretty much finished for the day. So we want to read a chapter of our book, so we might do that from 7.45 to 8.30, 7.45, to 8.30, read book, and that was budget. And then we're gonna finish off the day with watching Traitors Before Bed, which is brilliant, really recommend it. Um, so we're gonna do that from 8.35 to 10 p.m. So that's our day planned out using task mapping. So I hope you find that useful. Um, again, if you want to go through how it works in more detail, just pause this page here. So what you do is you write out tasks in the order, prioritize your main tasks using the rectangle, your remaining tasks use a different shape, connect the tasks in order, decide on the timings and stick to the timings as best as you can as well. So if it says like four o'clock finish, finish at four o'clock, Try and get, well, this is, again, I'm trying this at the moment. I'm not perfect at it, but this is what the recommendation is. Try to get, try to get into the habit of planning the following day. So, um, again, if you can write out your tasks for the next day and try and get into the habit of sticking to them and you start to work out, you know, timings and things like that. Other, uh, adding breaks whenever you see a, um, a triangle or a, an arrowhead. So make sure you put in breaks. Use time blocks. So that was the uh, time block page. You don't have to use this, you know, it's specifically in a journal. Um, where are my time blocks? You don't have to specifically use this in a journal. You could write this out just on a note page, but any way to time block your week is quite handy to do. Um, 
journal, yeah. Um, for January. Yeah, so use time box um, and goals and projects to plan ahead. So rather than thinking every day of what to do, if you've got a projects that you can work on, so for example, um, in the projects pages here, I've got some projects and you can put start dates, finish dates, um, you know, tasks and subtasks. So rather than actually writing all your tasks out, you can just write work on projects one and then you can make some progress towards your goals um, there that way. Um, and again, go back to daily pages and the daily journal. Um, and then review your week at the end as well. So if you, any way you can, so at the end of the week, review how you're getting on with uh, with your tasks and your task planner. And again, this is all stuff that I'm, you know, nobody's perfect. So this is all stuff I'm trying at the moment, but I'm really finding having a, a journal helps. Um, you know, this is mine, but there are lots available. So I would recommend getting, getting some sort of journal or planner to help plan ahead. Um, so there you go. So that is the, um, that is using shapes for task mapping in the Remarkable. So I hope you found this, this video helpful. If you have any questions, um, just give me a shout. If you want to know where to get this planner from, again, just give me a shout. I can help you on that. And um, hopefully get some more videos out to you soon on tips and tricks for the Remarkable. Thank you.